This video has taken me one hell of a long time to make. This is partly due, of course, to my ultimately incredibly busy schedule, which I can never seem to shake even in my summer holiday at the moment. And secondly, because the craft in question was really, really troublesome. This was a Juna dropship, as you saw in the intro there, that is going to be a base on Juna. We're going to set it up, and of course it would, well it would have, had the capabilities to take off and hopefully return to orbit once more, um, hence the massive RS-25 engines on the side of it. However, things did not quite go to plan, especially in testing. I mean, I'll let the, the testing footage speak for itself here, because, well, you'll just see for yourself how troublesome this, this craft really is. Yeah, as you can see, the rockets, at least when we were testing this vehicle anyway, didn't really hold up too well in testing. However, after extremely long times, extremely long periods of time trying to actually get this thing to function, I got it in a state where it was somewhat stable and just basically strapped it to a rocket and crossed my fingers. And that's what you're witnessing right now. So let's talk a little bit about the design of this proposed Juna dropship base that you can see here. It has capacity for I think around 16 Kerbals, although we're only carrying 9 on this one including Jeb, so that's 8 in the cabin, and 1 which is Jeb inside of a rover which is of course in that little, uh, that little cargo ramp that's on the front of the ship there. When I was trying to design these things, I was initially looking at sort of designs that were reminiscent of the uh, Stormtrooper dropship elements um, that were used in The Force Awakens, if you haven't already seen that in the opening scene. Um, I was kind of sort of going for that, sort of like a landing craft type feel, but in the end I don't think I managed to get it very, very well uh, established in terms of that. Um, I also tried um, many different iterations of this thing, as you can see the rover here. I also tried many different iterations. Um, this, uh, the initial designs included massive, massive delta wings that would have allowed us to get a lot of lift even in Juna's thin atmosphere and potentially guide it around for a guided landing, but tests in Juna's atmosphere of that um, showed that it wasn't really viable as I came down at I think about a, a 85 degree um, nose, le nose angle of descent which was um, it was far from optimal shall we say. Um, they also, I also had versions with actual landing gear rather than just landing legs but those again they didn't have the uh, center of mass quite balanced with the parachutes even I, though I moved the par parachutes and rebalanced them several times. Um, they never really got to um, a stage that I was happy with and so as a result I just went for normal landing legs and sort of hoped for the best. But the engines were where I ran into the most problems with this design. The four RS-25 engines, while probably overkill, were probably... They were, they were so hard to balance with the centre of mass and centre of thrust. Funnily enough, once this booster stage is actually removed from the base, the centre of thrust for those four landing engines is actually balanced completely. And I am accounting for the rear engine as well, the rear deorbit engine that I have on as well, which is another RS-25. I am accounting for the mass of that, and for some reason, it still thinks it's unbalanced, even when I've like emptied the fuel, I've put the fuel in again, I've checked the tank centre of mass and how it shifts and moved the engines accordingly. For some reason, it still wants to just flip out, but this was the most stable configuration I could, um, I could figure here. The centre of mass is towards the back of the craft here, um, it's sort of sort of two-thirds of the way towards the back of the fuel tank, which is in the middle there as you can see. Um, those two sort of wings there are in case it flipped forwards and I decided to go in for like a nose-first descent. That was because um, 
I, this thing had a tendency to just flip out backwards, but I found these wings made no difference. But it was better to have them and have more control, I thought, than, uh, in, well, some form of control authority than none at all. So I thought I might as well. And here's where I just found out something that was uh, interesting. I'd forgotten to put in a decoupler between the fairing and the transfer stage in the engine, so I tried heating it up in, while we were aerobraking in Juna's atmosphere there. That didn't work, so I just had to bring up Wacker Kerbal and just sort of smash it into um, submission. And it actually worked! I was sort of scared that it may actually blow up the rest of the craft, but it didn't actually blow it up. So you can see here we've deorbited now, we're going on terminal descent down into Juna's atmosphere and while we're doing that it gives me chance to talk about the song of the week. This one I'm going to be talking about the song of the week, it's a very special um, song for me, it's one of my favourite songs of all time actually. Its name is Science and Faith by the script from the album Science and Faith. A um, few of you guys in America will probably have heard the script, as of most people in the UK probably, they're Irish, they are awesome. And um, I strongly recommend checking them out, because, and especially the song and the album, because it's definitely my favourite album of those. So coming back onto the actual mission now here, you can see we're starting to fire our engines. Not really getting much uh, movement at the moment because we are in the lower atmosphere, but as we start to hit the denser atmosphere of Juno, we spin out and go retrograde. So now for me, it's a massive scramble to try and turn off all the engines, turn on the correct one, which is the rear engine for this sort of descent method. And then it's a mad scramble to get the parachutes to open at the maximum pressure. And this is always, I always seem to misplace the parachutes when uh, landing on Juna here because, well, I always put set them to um, open at too high of a pressure and something explodes, this isn't going well, and we hard impact the ground. Now, initially I got up and started raging at this because, well, I, I, I'd worked so hard and I'd gotten this far, but then I realised all the crew had survived and the rover was in fact intact. And so Jeb is now going to go out and explore the horizon to check that they've landed in a safe enough area. And while it may not be 100% safe, it most certainly is beautiful. Look at that, look at those rolling hills, it's fantastic. Nevertheless, it's time to Je for Jeb to get out and plant a flag for their achievement because while they are kind of screwed in a lot of ways, they are also safe. Um, for the time being anyway, I mean they have plenty of living space for all of them. Uh, there's a rover that's fully functional that they can use to explore the surrounding terrain and maybe even wait for a rescue mission. But the world of Juna is cruel and the Kerbals will need to have a look at their surrounding terrain to make sure they can survive. A rescue mission will also have to be coordinated from the ground back on Kerbin. But as Jeb goes to explore that terrain, it remains for me to say thanks for watching guys, remember to like and subscribe for more and until next time, peace out.